Hello, family, and welcome Rome, to Role Model Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. Elder Parent Whisper, and today with me, I have an amazing couple, Ms. Christina and, and Herb. How are you guys? We're very good. Thank you. Doing really well today. Thank you. Very cool. I'm very excited to have you guys there. I've seen you at our community a couple of times, and audience members, thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, I think you are interested and excited to be hearing about uh, what they have to offer. It's something that is very important. So, Christina Harp, uh, thank you and welcome to the show. Uh, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Can you tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you do, and how you got involved in what you do, please? Excellent. Well, thank you for having us, and we are excited to share our information with families. Um, we are the co founders of Vibrant Family Education. And it is a coaching and um, tutoring online school program for those parents who are looking for maybe alternative education models. So there are a lot of parents who right now are thinking that there might be something better for their students than the regular public school. And so we are a, found a group that works with them to make things easier for that transition and help them figure out what's best for their family. Awesome. And is, is this something that's subject specific? Uh, I'm going to kind of let you guys go for it in just a second. But is this something uh, that is subject specific or it could be anything, basically? This could be absolutely anything. anything. We are we are very wide ranging mm -hmm. in, in what we offer and, and how we approach families. We're looking for school age, of course, kindergarten through fifth grade is our focus right now, but we will be expanding out to middle school and high school as we grow and mature in a company. And then also there's the coaching aspect. So maybe the parents have the education under control, but they have some scheduling um difficulties that around the education that they want to help with maybe they want some tutoring we are getting a little ahead of ourselves we are. <laughs> so um what we do is is we have started vibrant family education um, i was an entrepreneur for most of my life i had other jobs but i was heavily into entrepreneurship and christina has been a teacher for 27 years mm -hmm. with the current way what's happening in the world right now um being in classroom is a little more difficult for conservative minded individuals, especially entrepreneurships small um, businesses. and small business people mm -hmm. with with basically the kind of the way they're teaching children that that um, that, that capitalism isn't is wrong. Let's yeah. just put it out there. They're saying capitalism is wrong. And so from an entrepreneur and a teacher background, um, we didn't necessarily agree with that message. And over the last couple of years, um, Christina started having a lot more um, ethical issues going into the classroom, not being able to teach the kids what she wanted, not being able to teach them personal responsibility, but having to teach to a test and to, to, to teach stuff that, that didn't fit within our moral ethical structure mm -hmm. so we were looking for a way out and 30 years of entrepreneurship 30 years of, of teaching, teaching experience we thought you know this would be a really great way to go into it um as an entrepreneur one of the things that we actually did is we kind of alienated our children we tried to keep them separate from what we were doing. We were doing a lot of business development. We were doing a lot of personal development and our kids and our family was kind of left to the side so that, you know, when, when we got wealthy, when we got our business going, when then we would come back and bring the family back and try and fix it. Mm -hmm. But that just kept getting farther and farther out. And then when that did start to happen and we reached out to our kids, they weren't there for us. We were separated. There was lack of communication. And so not only did we did we want to change the, the course of schooling to bring back personal responsibility and to bring back life and life actual skills, education life, back yeah. into school, we also wanted to help entrepreneurs and business families not lose their kids. Because oh, again, right. with there's there's the business development, there's the there's the personal, personal development, development, but Along the way, people are losing their family. So we want to bring the family back into it. And we're using the education to bring that third leg of the stool of the family back, back so that 
um, by, by bringing the education and by mapping it around what entrepreneurs are doing, mm -hmm. then they can, they will have a common dialogue with their kids. They will know what they're doing. They, they can bring that information and the education of entrepreneurship along with the schooling that the kids are doing and rebuild the family and put the family back together through the education system. I love it. This is so refreshing because I know when I was growing up, of course, the school system was a traditional school system, but it was very set and rigid. So it took it did not take into account the child's personal and emotional and brain development. Uh, it did not take into account their individuality, their interests, any of that. So you're supposed to follow this model, which many times people have called for revamping of the education system because it was based, based out of the industrial revolution and not necessarily in optimizing an individual's learning uh, basically and their love of learning in the first place so that was one part of it the other part is that in the process we have kind of industrialized education to the point where all of a sudden parents kind of hand off their kids for a, a decade or more basically to yeah. uh, teachers and the education system then they kind of hope for the best and they're kind of detached from it which again takes the parents out, also does not get us involved with the kids. Uh, so that's the second part of it. And from the kids' perspective, I also remember I hated the system. I'm a neurodiverse person. I had ADHD, and I do not learn the same way that the kids did. Uh, so when a teacher would say something, I would want to challenge them. I would disrupt the class. However, during summertime, I would pick up a quantum physics book and read it on my own and would love it. <laughs> so, exactly. so I totally agree with a lot of the stuff that you guys are saying um, and really appreciate that you guys are taking in these real life skills and things that really matter because kids go through the education system and then at the other end of it, you're like, okay, now go and live a successful life. And they're like, how do I do that? None yeah. of the stuff I learned really applies to it. So, exactly. And in the education system, in the school system right now, it's like the classroom sizes are so big, the schools are so big mm -hmm. that you put thousands of untrained little human beings with no social skills, no communication skills in a big room and say, figure it out for five minutes. And then we're going to put you in this boring place for an hour. And then you figure it out for five minutes. And then we're going to put you in a boring place for an hour. And then you got half an hour to for try lunch. and to try and dodge all of the weird stuff going on. And then we're going to put you back in this boring stuff for an hour. Yeah. So that, that trauma inducing environment, just so many kids get in the cracks and left out and, and, and just mm -hmm. left along the way. Whereas exactly. instead of like teaching them to a test, if you give them a love of learning, then mm -hmm. then they will pick up that book in the summer and exactly. go for it and so we're trying to bring that home and so instead of taking it instead of putting that them there bring the education system home mm -hmm. and then when you do need the socialization skills then you get to pick where that happens exactly. your, your, your child right. likes to do this a group of people doing that in a similar mind you will get the communication skills you will get the the mm -hmm the socialization skills without the mad trauma causing society that only happens and in the, that, in and one the other thing is you get to start giving back to your community a little bit earlier so think about a child that's here at the house with you right. learning education and then you get to go do community service when they're younger when it makes an impact and when they can learn how to work in all those different situations I, I, I love it. And then here's the other part that you actually mentioned, especially when it comes to tutoring and things that fall outside of school, because while a lot of parents might be super busy and have extra responsibilities, when they give the kids to the educational system, if things don't work, oftentimes now they're left to their own devices to figure out where do I fill in the shortcomings and exactly. parents can get frustrated in that process or worse uh, not even know where to begin and the child ends up being the victim in the process uh, and not being able to fully optimize their potential so i really love this what are some of the challenges that you have faced when uh, parents are coming to you what are some of the complaints or issues that they come to you with a lot of a lot of times it's around like scheduling so they're like oh well you know we have homework to do and the homework takes so long then we don't have family time and then we miss out on 
trying to get everything done before we go to sports practice or have dinner. So one of the things that I was talking with one of my families about was scheduling homework, not immediately after school, because the kids need a break. They've put a lot of energy into school. Right. Once they get home, they need a little bit of downtime, a little bit of quiet time, but then get that homework done and maybe do that like right before dinner. So then dinner's done, then you have your evenings open, your free routine and things like that. So the families actually get more time together. And, and part of that is also consistency. So mm -hmm. if they come home without homework, then have a little project time so that when it comes time to do homework, they always have something to do right. during that time. And it helps with learning scheduling. It helps with learning with persistence and, you know, all those different skills we want lifelong learners and professionals, people learning or running businesses later to have built in. So if they're learning it when they're younger, it's going to be a lot easier when they're older. Actually, you just mentioned something that made me realize uh, when you go to the school system, it's very rigid and structured. So kids oftentimes don't have a choice in deciding on the outcome of their day, right? So when they come home, all of a sudden, now they're expected to prioritize, time manage, and and they're left to their own devices. So I'm assuming this becomes an issue. I've <laughs> seen this be an issue, basically. Yeah, when you know, it comes to most parents don't know how to do that. Right. And they expect their kids to just do that without necessarily providing any input well you're going to school to do that now just go do your school you know, how to, homework, do it, right? you know how to do it so that that aspect of bringing the family back into it and together and again so the the wide variety that we do if you want to leave your kids in school if that's really working for you we can help figure out where issues are with you help you with scheduling figure that out help with homework we do offer tutoring um, if you are looking to, if you realize that you, the school's not working and you are looking for alternatives, we can help you plan that. We can help you figure out your state laws, make that happen and help you out. Um, and we go all the way up to, we have teacher certified assistant lessons. So if you do decide to homeschool, but you don't feel like you're qualified to be a teacher, well, then we have teaching capabilities. We can go in and, and work with your kids while it's still at home and and get all of that done so from from just coaching while they're in school all the way up to pretty much a an online education, um, education mm -hmm. system we we can cover that all right now okay. so so let's let's talk about it this way because there are there are families where the parents are detached from what the kids are doing mm -hmm. uh so naturally they need to understand some of the red flags, things to look for, so they know when to reach out, right? So that's one part of it. And there are also parents who know about their kids. They know how their kids are, and they re recognize that, hey, uh, my kid is struggling with this or that. Um, and then th basically, so I wanted to ask you, what are some of the things to look out for uh, that are the telltale signs that, hey, I need to seek help. I need to connect to an expert on that. So that's number one. And number two, when, when people, let's say, reach out to you as an expert, naturally, they have to do things a little differently. Otherwise, they get the same results that they have been getting at home. Right. So what would be your one tip for things that can help move things towards the better at home uh, for their kids and their relationships with the children? So the red flags are the things to really look out for. Of course, you know, grades, but a lot of parents don't necessarily even understand the grading system anymore because it's kind of been changed. So it's like nearly meets or meets or exceeds. It's like, well, what does that really mean? So really talk to your teacher and figure out what does that nearly meet mean? Is like, are they within two months of being on grade level? Are they five months within being grade level? Make sure you're knowing that report card and understanding and talking to your teacher. So of course that's a red flag. If you have all the not yet or the not meeting then you know there's an issue okay. the other thing is child behavior though because if your child is doing fine at school because they're holding it together being the good kid that you really want them to be but then they come home and they just like melt down and completely mm -hmm. fall apart that's a red flag because again they're trying to 
please you by being super good in school. They're trying to please the teacher by being super good in school, but there's something not happening that's fulfilling their needs because they're not able to hold it together when they get home. Absolutely. And then of course, those kids who do be, who do exhibit behaviors in the classroom, you know, obvious red flag, something, some me, need is not being that. And of course, the most obvious is they're going to tell you and no, listen because they they will tell you but not with communication you know it's those other little things that you pick up on you know your child you know if your child's behavior changes or their group of friend changes there's different things that you see you know there okay. there's something going on watch those flags right you keep an eye on be active basically proactive uh mm -hmm. in, in that sense um so communication uh, so one, one thing, everything that helps come back to communication, mm -hmm. learn, learn how to communicate with your kid, with your children. Yeah. Um, there's, there's so many different tools mm -hmm. out there now and exactly. we have lots of, we, you know, we know lots of them, yeah. different ways to try. So we actually interviewed, um, a person on our podcast that we have bringing education home. And we talked about communication with the child. And if you don't have a communication system set up already, maybe, you know, you have a teenager and all of a sudden, oh, let's sit down and have a talk. And the teenagers are like, um, yeah, you right. haven't talked to me like this since I was 10. I don't <laughs> think so. Start slow, you know, go out and do an activity take a walk do something where you can communicate but you're not like sitting you know face to face where they're feeling like threatened kind of okay or find a way to um talk about something they want to talk about their video game their best friend their whatever and then bring the communication back around to how can i help you what do you need start slow and build that relationship back Christina, you actually brought up an important point here because a lot of times when we talk about school, the focus is so much on the academic performance, but there's also the social and the behavioral component, the emotional component as well that needs to go hand in hand. And oftentimes school completely misses that whole thing until a kid blows up and we end up having an incident, for instance. Right. Um, so that's important. And what you just mentioned kind of goes back to that that it's not just about the academics but also how your kid is doing emotionally and socially uh is something that you gotta keep an eye out so this is really cool stuff and you mentioned the podcast so uh i know that this topic of child development is vast so uh, can you tell our audience members a little bit more about the ways that they can connect with you and uh learn more about what you do yes so um being connected with me on Facebook, Christina Hay Averitt, H-E-A-G-H-A-V-R-I-T-T -T, is a great way. All of my links and things are connected to my Facebook profile or just to have a, a conversation, ask questions, find out what we do. You can go to vibrantfamilyeducation.com and schedule a discovery call, a parent-teacher conference per se, and we can talk about what you need. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you guys so much for what you do. This is so important. And unfortunately, there's just so much on the plate of the teachers, so much on the plate of the parents. And sometimes, you know, this overflowing stuff, nevertheless, is still important and the kids need the support. So our audience members, I am going to include all the resources and all the connecting ways that you can reach out to Christina and Herb and make sure that you take advantage of it. One of the really, really important things in, in our kids development is for us to role model the behavior that it's okay that you don't have all the answers but you know that you can reach out because there's always experts willing to help uh, so take advantage of that role model the behavior uh, reach out connect and find out ways where you can optimize your children's potential uh, and um, benefit from the expertise that is being presented to you if you haven't already done so make sure that you click subscribe so that you can go ahead and get notified of all the experts gifts and programs and the tips that they present at this channel uh, and Christina Herb thank you so much guys uh, for being here doing what you do and taking time out of your busy day to mention all the stuff that you said um, any final words for our parents and uh, our families before we finish basically well thank you for having us and then of course like you said be a person who models the important skill of asking questions and finding information 
grow your love of learning so that your child will also love learning. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, everybody is, is into coaching and getting help because you can't, you can't do it by yourself. Parenting, it's like parenting is so much more than having kids. Um, and so <laughs> Dr. L, the parent whisperer knows that better than anybody. <laughs> Um, so again, thank you so much for, for allowing us to come on to your show. What you're doing is also very, very important to, to, to bring families back into a family unit. So, so thank you for what you're doing and thank you for having us on. Thank you. I think actually you hit it right on the head, you hit the nail right on the head. Parenting is a lot like entrepreneurship where you got to test and try and perfect the craft, basically. And you and don't know exactly what working, kind of a kid you're going to get. If right. it starts working, that's only going to happen for a little while and you're going to have to do it. So <laughs> it's, it it's a constant, it's a constant thing. So, so having help, having other ideas, having multiple brains at it. It used to be a, com a community was raising a family and now we're so distanced that, that mm -hmm. community is hard to find locally. So reach out online, get, get with, with Dr. L, find, find groups of people that, that find you your can, village, find your village, you your child. And if you want experts, reach out to us and, and we can get real specific. Awesome. Thank you guys. I can't wait for future collaborations and having the enrichment program. So look forward to seeing you guys in the future. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you.